Hey there, in this video, we're gonna learn how to customize our plots and make them look whatever way we want them to look like. So let's start out with some stuff to plot. I'm gonna need some X values and Y values. I'll use a lin space for my X values. I'll go from negative three to positive three and I'll take 200 steps to make a nice smooth graph. And I'm gonna make Y equal to X to the fourth power. That should give us something kind of interesting to look at. So we'll just put that in its own cell. So let's start with a real basic plot. So we'll do plot x comma y, and we'll show it. So this defaults to using a blue color for the line. It guesses what good limits would be. It gives us a little bit of space, which you may or may not want around the plot. There's no labels for the x or y axis. There's no title, and there's no legend. Uh, these are all things we can add to the plot, though. All right, so first thing we should do is let's try and change the style of this line. There's a few ways we can do that. We can be verbose about it. We can write out, say, color equals red. It'll plot it in a red color. Uh, we could type out color equals green. We can use just a G for color. It'll understand what that means. We can change the line style. The line style and we have to use a string code for this so like a dash dash is that one that's not one i spelled line style wrong all right so see here's a, here's a nice time to talk about your error messages you see all these error messages because plot has to call a lot of code to do what it's doing and at the very very end is the helpful thing hey you spelled something wrong so spell line style the right way Dash dash will give us a dashed line. Uh, I think like a colon would be a dotted line. In any case, it's not that you really have to memorize all this stuff. If we hit shift tab to look at the documentation and scroll down, there's a lot of it. But in here, line style, we could also use the name LS. We can see here some of our line styles that we can choose. So by default is a solid line, which would be just a single dash, dash line, dotted line. That's mostly what you would need. We can actually combine these since it's so common to change the color and the line style We can just put it as a third positional argument. So if I just want a red line I could do R Or I could do R dash would be the same thing or I could do R dash dash if I wanted a red dash line um, So you'll see this usage pretty frequently Where your your colors are like R G B for red green blue or probably Y for yellow K for black I know that one. That's a nice common color to use Again, you can look all these up. So that's your basic changing the line. Now, next thing we want to adjust here is the uh, spacing for the X limits and the Y limits. In our case, let's say I don't want any extra space. So I want to adjust my limits. The way we do that is with the command X lim for X limits and Y lim for Y limits. And then in here, uh, here we see those args and quargs, right? That's horrible when you see that. You're like, well, what's it supposed to be? And you have to read the documentation. All right, it's expecting left, right. So the leftmost limit here, let's make that negative three. Most rightmost limit will be positive three. So we'll see that, how that adjusts my graph left, right. If I want to change the vertical, I could do y limits. But let's say I want to add some more space. So I want to start at negative one and I want to end at 100. So we can change my graph that way. Uh, next thing we might want to adjust is the size of the figure as it appears on screen. So right now, this is just like an image. You can sort of see ghosted here if I try to drag it away. It's just a regular image in my web browser. Um, well, unfortunately, right-clicking opens up some Jupyter menus, but it's just an image. And I can control the size of that using the command figure. That needs to happen before you plot anything. So it has to be like your first command here. Plot.figure. And if we look in there, Bunch of commands. The one that's meaningful to us is fig size. Very rarely you might want to change the DPI dots per inch. That's like the resolution of your image. If you're like going to save it and you want it to be high resolution, you might make that like 300 to 600. But for now, we're just going to change fig size. And fig size is going to be a tuple for us. We can see it right here, float, float. So this is width height in inches, which is not especially meaningful when it's on your computer screen. But we can play around with some values to so get a good feel for what's big and what's small. So let's try fig size, and I have to spell it out here because it wasn't actually the first argument. I'm using a keyword argument because I want to call it out. So fig size equals 6.4. So that's what our default size is. Is 6.4 really close to it? 
So if I want something bigger, I might do like a, I don't know, eight by six. Maybe I want it to be really stretched, but not that tall. I might do something like 12 by four. And you can see how it's scaling on my screen. See how it scales on your screen. Uh, I'm zoomed in a bit for the video, so you might want different sizes. But you play around with that to control how big the figure is. And next up, let's look at adding some annotation to this figure. Let's give it a title. So we can do this, uh, unlike figure, this can be anywhere in the list. I usually do it closer to the bottom, but it doesn't really matter where we put it, as long as it's after the figure is called and before the figure is shown. Uh, so let's call, let's give this thing a title. We'll just go with title. And we should also give it some labels for the x-axis and the y-axis. So it'll be x-label for x-axis. And while we're at it, let's also do a y-label for the y-axis. Okay, so we've labeled our axes here. Um, this will actually handle LaTeX type formatting if you know how to do that. So if you want some kind of fancy equation and stuff in here, like, um, well, the x was x, of course, and then the y was x to the fourth power. So if you're familiar with this kind of syntax, where you surround it by dollar signs to get the formatting, so with the four as a superscript, you can do that. See, it's kind of tiny here, but the X has the four sub superscript. If you don't know a lot of tech, then don't worry about it. It's not something you have to know, just if you do. Uh, or if you sort of mimic the what I just did here. You can do some fancy math formatting in your labels. You can do it in your title as well. Uh, let's say I want to add just some general text somewhere in my figure. I can do that as well. That's a little less common. Um, but our command there is, I think it's text, strangely enough. Uh, so the X position, Y position, and S is the string we want to include. We also have some options for adjusting the fonts if you want to get really fancy. So let's go put a label like right at uh, X equals zero, Y equals 50. So be kind of like in the middle. And let's just call it label. Okay, so there we go, there's our label. And you can see the way this X, Y refers to, it's like the bottom left corner. So it's not centered. There are options in here to make it centered. Um, but by default, it's just going to do bottom left corner. Let's try and do some other stuff. Let's add a uh, legend onto our plot. Okay, so now it's kind of mad at me. So this isn't really an error message. It's more like a warning message. It says there's nothing to there's nothing to put in the legend. I haven't said anything to put in the legend. The legend itself is this little square right here. So it's kind of tiny because there's nothing to put in there. The way you add things to the legend is you need to add a label equals keyword to the thing you're plotting. So all the way back up here, if I want this to appear in my legend, I have to give it some kind of label. So this label can be um, what's called data. Now if I run this, it shows up in my legend. Now there's only one thing here on this plot. If you're wondering, how do I add a second thing to my plot? You just call plot a second time. So we can do another call to plot. Let's plot x versus um, not y, which was x to the fourth. Let's do x squared for comparison. You'll notice I don't have to have a variable in this place. I can have some kind of expression, something that will be evaluated. x squared means make a new array that's equal to x squared. So that's legal. I can put that in there. Let's make it look different. We'll make a red solid line in this case. And we'll give it some other label. Now when I run this, we can see we got another line on my plot labeled other. And these are going to draw from top to bottom. So the second red line got drawn on top of the black line. It usually doesn't matter, but if you have a case where something's hiding something else, changing the order of the commands can help you out there. Okay, we've added a legend. Uh, let's add a grid. That can look kind of pretty. Now, don't think you have to add all of these commands to every plot you make. I'm just trying to show you what kinds of things you can do. So plot.grid, got a nice grid there. And let's add a um, some axes, like the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's draw them in. First of all, let me adjust my y range just so my x x-axis isn't so close to the bottom. So right now I have my y limit at negative 10. Let's put it at like negative 50. A little bit better centered. And here we can see this is where the x-axis and the y-axis should be. Right now they just look like regular grid lines. Let's make them a bit darker. And we can do that with plot x h line, so axis horizontal line. 
and axis V line for axis vertical line. These have some options, like you can change where they're at. So by default, this would draw at y equals zero, but we could draw it somewhere else if I wanted it at a different y value. And we can control its um, min and max here. Min and max are not data point zero and one, that'd be really short, but I think they refer to like the entire figure. So the bottom of the figure to the top of the figure. If I wanted to go halfway up, I would use 0.5. And then we have some keyword arguments in here, like the colors. If I want to draw in a different color, I'd have a keyword argument for that. But by default, it's going to draw black. Oh no, by default, it draws blue, right? Yeah, the default color that everything draws in is blue, and that's dumb. We want it to be black, so that's easy enough. We'll just do color equals black, or color equals K. Not colors, color. I think black looks a lot better here. And so we can draw a black line on our graph if we wanted the axis to be shown. There are actually lots more customization commands, but I think this gives you a good taste of what you can do. Other things you can do is you can customize the axes, like where are you drawing these at? How are they formatted? You're getting pretty fancy at that point. You can customize how thick the border is, if the border even exists. All of that is customizable. All the fonts and the font sizes, all customizable in Matplotlib. So you can make these figures look however you want.